Wednesday night, DC protesters heard that he was eating at Morton's. And so protesters soon showed up out front. Uh, the manager, apparently, they wanted them to kick out Kavanaugh. So the manager had him leave through the rear of the restaurant. Supposedly, we later learned Brett Kavanaugh never heard the protesters. He never saw the protesters. This wasn't him, you know, taking the last helicopter off of the roof of the Mortons or anything like that. Just to be clear, uh, but despite that, but I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure it's safe to assume this is how we have a consistent level of dishonesty in partisan media, left wing, right wing. I can almost guarantee you, right wing media, some folks anyone, anyway, right wing media, are going to report this as you know he ran for his life and you know he probably even apply he was with his family, his kids were there. I don't know who was there. Maybe they were. But I'm saying they're going to try to juice it up as much as possible to make it seem like, oh, my goodness, they came with the pitchforks. Kind of like January 6th. But I digress. Hortons has put out a statement uh, defending him and trying to stop people from doing stuff like this, saying, Honorable Supreme Court Justice Kavanaugh, putting honorable there is a choice. I'm just going to say that. I agree. Honorable Supreme Court Justice Kavanaugh and all of our other patrons at the restaurant were unduly harassed by unruly protesters while eating dinner at our Morton's restaurant. Politics, regardless of your side or views, should not trample the freedom at play of the right to congregate and eat dinner. There so let me tell you something. That is a very anti-American statement to make that that restaurant made. But I can guarantee you a lot of people who watch this video won't even pick up on that fact. And that is the effect of tribalism, right? The idea in the United States of America that protesting would be referred to with these terms, unduly harassed by unruly protesters. This country was founded on unruly protests. How could anyone who loves this country that would drape themselves in the flag who would call themselves a patriot, ever refer to protesting as unruly. Look at all the major protests in our history that led us to the flawed, but also amazing place that we have reached now, right? I'm putting the good with the bad. You can't just look at America as all bad. There's a, there's a good amount of bad for sure. But it's also a good amount of good. And in contrast to the past as well, you got to look at how things were before. Hanging witches, drowning witches, slavery, women not having the right to vote, segregation, right? Compare that to where we are now. How did we get here? Unruly and therefore highly American protesting. A true American, a true patriot should be excited about protesting. The very act of the people rising up in the streets and standing up for what they believe in, even if you disagree with it, should give you a sense of pride that we in this country have the ability to have our voices heard. We have a place on the table in this country. And if you love America, that's a big part of America. That's a big part of why one would love America. But if you're a tribal tribalist, then you will forget about this wonderful thing we have in this country when it's the people you don't agree with that are doing it. Some of you still don't get the message I'm giving you right now, so let me give you a little thing to think about. Imagine that was Dr. Fauci who was having dinner, and protesters showed up demanding the truth, demanding accountability for how he handled the pandemic and his potential involvement in what may have started the pandemic. Would you then still be talking about unruly protesters? How dare they? The man should have freedom to have his food and not be bothered by these unruly people. These unruly people are Americans exercising their American freedom to protest. As long as no violence has occurred, you should be proud of it, right? In a dictatorship, you don't have to worry about unruly protesters because they all get locked up. Is that what you want? That's anti-American. What if it was Pelosi having dinner and she got interrupted? People are protesting against the insider trading. Don't you find it interesting how when the people protesting are protesting for something that you want, that it doesn't bother you as much? But when it's people you disagree with, then it's like, oh, freedom. You would side with the government, big government. You would side with the establishment over the people because these particular people you don't agree with.
that's an anti-American sentiment to have if that is how you feel. There's a time and a place for everything. Disturbing the dinner of all of our customers was an act of selfishness and a void of decency. I do declare. Uh, specifically, the right to congregate and eat dinner, I will point out, not specifically enumerated in the Constitution, so it's void. We don't have to abide by it. Um, oh, wouldn't it be great to have a right to privacy at this particular moment, Brett Kavanaugh? Ah, oh, you should have thought about that. But anyway, yeah, look, a, a lot of people have a lot of jokes to make. I understand there's a debate to be had about exactly what sort of protest is acceptable or not. I personally think you should use the rights they still let you have while you still have them. And uh, protesting is one of those rights, but. If your protesting is not unruly, if your protesting is not regarded as unacceptable by the people you're protesting against, you ain't doing it right. And therefore, you're not gonna get the results that you're looking for. The very point of protesting is to disrupt, to get people's attention, shake things up. If I'm protesting quietly and politely at designated hours in the corner, which is what some so-called patriots seem to would like. We don't mind your protesting, just don't interrupt people's dinners. If I'm not inconveniencing you, then why the hell are you gonna be listening to me? You trying to go to work and you see some random quiet group of people saying, uh, you know, abortion. Da, 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 da. You going to stop by to go see what they got to say? Now, you can get into the weeds about how effective it is and what's the result. And if you're just pissing off people, then why would they listen to you and blah, 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 blah. Well, you can apply that to all of the major protests that have happened to this country in decades that have led us to the place we are today. Women having the right to vote. Slavery not being a thing. Segregation not being a thing. Of course, some will put in their minds that uh, the protesting before was honorable and it was about something and da 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 da, -da and protesting today, it's just a nuisance. Unless, of course, it's protesting something that you support, anti-American. Oh, uh, I want to point out why it's happening. Because we no longer have a democracy, and by the way, also because of the Supreme Court. Now, those were decisions that were made in... This man just said, we no longer have a democracy. A very disturbing comment to make. I have a lot of problems with that statement. And, and you should pay close attention to anyone that you're listening to that keeps telling you we don't have a democracy. Think about what the people you listen to, what they're saying, the words they're using, and what they mean behind those words, and whether they're accurate or not, whether they represent reality or not. What's the effect of the message that they're putting out to you? What is the effect of putting out the message that we don't have a democracy? Think about what that would mean if it were true. And why would he want to promote that idea to the public? Stay with me. Uh, 76, 78, and then Citizens United. So those three decisions uh, destroyed our democracy. Now it's an auction. Uh, also brought to you by this very, very corrupt Supreme Court. Uh of course, some will say he's being hyperbolic. Always, always. Always the apologists never, never disappoint. There's always an excuse, always an explanation. No matter how bad of a thing that you do, there's always a, well, you know, possibly, you don't know why he meant what he did that. Maybe he didn't know. Uh, and so because we have no one to represent us, because the Democrats won't fight for us, because they take donor money too, because the Republicans are so authoritarian. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that why the Democrats won't fight for us? I thought the reason why the Democrats won't fight for us is because they don't have to. There's no consequence of ignoring the left. You ignore the left and nothing happens. There is no price to be paid. Their voters will vote for them anyway. Vote blue no matter who. Why would they pay attention to a group of people that don't matter politically? The way you matter politically is when you utilize your democracy to apply pressure to the people you put in power to make them do their jobs. But if you're not willing to do that, then you don't matter, and therefore you get ignored, which is what the left is getting right now. Joe Biden got elected, they said move him left, nobody moved him left, so when he got elected, they all went to sleep. The protesting died down, everybody's just chilling, right? They did force the vote, went to sleep, that's it. Ain't no protest, ain't no big movement. Where's the boycotts? Where's the organizing? Where's the direct action? pushing the Democrats. Where are the threats that, hey, Democrats, if you don't do X, Y, and Z, we're not voting for you. Where are the millions of Americans standing up 
on the left saying, hey, this is what going to happen if you don't do your job. And we're not waiting for that either right now. Right now, we don't feel you're doing your job. So now you're going to have to deal with us being unruly in the streets. Unruly with who we give our money to, whether it's donations or it's products. Corporations are buying our politicians and having them go against us. Well, we certainly won't be buying your products anymore. Where's the left that is willing to withhold their spending? Buying products from companies that are trying to control the people they voted for. All I hear is content creators beefing back and forth with each other. I don't see any major movement. There hasn't been any major movement until the, the Roe v. Wade overturning. And I don't know why they waited until it was official. These people have been telling us what they've been doing for decades. And they've been putting the pieces in place. And what has the left been doing? Nothing. Then we get the leak. What do they do? Nothing. Then it actually overturns. <laughs> and even in that moment, I still don't hear the threats of, if you don't X, Y, and Z, we're not going to vote for you. They went as far as to call the Democrats and said, hey, man, you know, when in Obama, you should have. I'm proud of them saying that, but I still don't hear the threats. If there is no threat, why would they pay attention to you? So this guy says we don't have a democracy. And some tribalists on the other side are going to play semantic games about making references to direct, direct, direct democracy. Yes, it's obvious we don't have that. But let's stop playing games and get serious. You know what we're talking about when, when we say democracy. We have a hybrid form of government, which is part democracy, part republic. That's why they call it a democratic republic. Or if you're on the right, you will prefer another word, which basically means the same thing, constitutional republic, because of the infatuation with the word constitution. But essentially, if you look up constitutional republic and democratic republic, basically the same thing, hybrid form of government, part democracy, part republic. It's not that difficult. A system of government by the whole population or all eligible members of a state, typically through elected representatives. So we do not have a system of government by the whole population or all the eligible members of a state that is through elected representatives. So the people in our government are not elected representatives and they're not elected by eligible members of a state. Is that what he's saying? We don't have that? Definition of democracy, government by the people, rule of the majority. So if we have an election and an overwhelming majority of the people vote for a certain person, does that person not therefore win? Now, dishonest folks on the left will talk about the ridiculous system we have of the, the college, right? But even, even, when you, even if you take that into account, if you have an overwhelming majority of the people voting for you, and some people would say, well, you got... Four million people more than the, uh, the other one. We have over 300 million people in this country. I know all of those people can't vote, but we had a lot of people in this country. So getting three million more votes, eh, it's not, not, not really as impressive as maybe you think it is. <clears throat> if you are really, really an amazing candidate, unlike any we've had in a long time, and you can inspire the people massively, the college ain't going to stop you. Right. Because you're going to get enough votes in every place that you're going to win the popular vote. You're going to win the Electoral College votes. Just to give an extreme scenario, let's say 90 percent of the population of the voting population votes for a candidate. Guess who's going to win? I don't know why we're looking at a cat right now. Guess who's going to win? If 90 percent of the population says that abortion should be legal in all states and they say we're not voting for anybody. Who doesn't support that? What do you think happens then? Dishonest actors will talk about, oh, the Supreme Court, separate branch of government. We don't elect them. But how do they get appointed in the first place, if not via democracy? If a majority of people who believe that abortion should be free keep voting for candidates that actually are going to fight for that, then the party they keep voting for is going to have a supermajority and they're going to be able to do whatever they need, codify whatever they need to do, right? They're going to be the ones. That means all during Trump, he wouldn't have been in power. It would have been the party they voted for, right? And they would have appointed those three judges. And it wouldn't have been overturned. We have a democracy. However, the people have been fooled by people like this guy on TYT into believing that they don't have any power and would have a democracy 
So democracy in this country is a loaded shotgun that we aim at the ground as the big black bear approaches. And then we complain as we get eaten to death how democracy doesn't work. The loaded shotgun aimed at the ground as we are being killed by the black bear. Democracy is not automatic. It's a tool to be utilized. Protest is only one of the many ways that you do so. The fact that Biden has been elected and been in power for so long and I have not seen any major movement. We had all this movement after George Floyd, understandably so, went global and all. I still don't remember what the clear demands were, and I still remember what the threats were of if they're not met. It sounded to me like the whole Black Lives Matter protest was optional whether you wanted to do something or not. What was the threat? That if, if you don't, the only threat I heard is we're we, we going to be in the street until this happens. Okay, why do I care? I'm a multimillionaire. I got my mansion. I don't have to look at you guys. If you're protesting in one state, I go to another state. I don't care that you're in the streets. Now, I'm not trying to say that being in the streets doesn't have a purpose, but I'm saying if that's your only threat, <laughs> it's only going to go so far. You got to be willing to say, we're going to vote you out if you don't do this. You got to be willing to say, I'm not going to donate to you. I'm not going to buy products from certain companies that are supporting things that are against my beliefs. You got to be willing to do what the right has been doing. Now, the left likes to mock the right because they get caught up in these nonsensical culture wars. I get it. It is ridiculous that they spend all this energy worrying about stuff that has been put in their brains by elites, multimillionaires, and billionaires. The establishment put these ideas in their brains about what they need to be afraid of, and they fall for it. But while you're laughing at that, you don't recognize the fact that they're doing better than you in terms of utilizing democracy. They say, if you don't do this, we go vote you out. We won't show up for you if you don't deliver on these culture war nonsense. There's no threat from the left. You can ignore them. You don't got to do nothing they say, and there won't be no consequence. Vote blue no matter who. Some of them will dishonestly listen to this video and say, well, I'm not voting for Democrats quiet protest, I guess. If you're just simply not going to show up, you're wasting your time and you're not paying attention. You think Democrats are going to get some kind of lesson from simply quote unquote losing an election, even though they still keep their jobs. You need to be loud. If your protest is I'm not voting for you because you guys suck, you need to be loud about it. You need to make it clear, make them hear that. Listen, we here we are a large group of people that would vote for you if you would actually do something. But we see you're not doing anything. We think you suck and hear us and hear us good. You keep on this course, we're not voting for you. I don't hear those threats coming from the left, right? In their own little bubbles, they talk to themselves and say, yeah, yeah I'm not voting with the Democrats. Baby, baby. Where's the direct action? Where's the protest? Where are the means of letting these things be known? You have, you have people like Jackson Hinkle, People like Jimmy Dore, major platforms that they could utilize to get this message out of a protest. We are not voting for you Democrats because you suck. But instead, they're creating content. They are entertainers, a.k.a. bullshitters. And they're influencing the minds of people who would be the ones who can utilize democracy to change things for the better. But instead, they're listening to people like this guy on the Young Turks telling them they don't have a democracy. If we don't have a democracy then what's the point of anything? If we don't have a democracy, that means your voice doesn't matter. You can't do anything. It's hopeless. But if that's the message that they're sending you, that is a pro-duopoly message. The duopoly wants you to think that you don't have any power and there's nothing you can do. So just give up because you don't have a democracy. That is the message that the duopoly wants you to hear. And that's the message that the Young Turks is giving you. You don't have any power. You don't have a democracy. Don't do anything. Just stay on Facebook getting your likes, stay in your little bubble, stay in your lane, let the corruption continue, don't get in our way. That is the message from the Young Turks. And this is my message from the Debate Me channel. We do have a democracy and it is well and strong. That is why there's laws being changed all over this country because the folks on the right, they're making demands, they're making threats. The folks on the left, I don't really know what the hell's going on. No threat, no demands, no teeth, loud bark, no bite. 
That is the American left in the United States of America in 2022. If I were a politician, I would not pay the left any attention, assuming I was a corrupt politician, of course. I don't see any reason politically to pay any attention to the left because they don't do anything. I don't mean that literally, but look how long Biden has been president and I haven't seen any major boycotts and protests. Right? We, we know they can do it. We saw, you know, BLM. They have the ability to organize and do stuff. Trump was out of office, they went to sleep. Why would a politician pay attention to a group of people who don't matter politically? What matters politically? The only thing that matters politically is votes and donations. If the left is not presenting a threat in terms of votes, and again, even if they lose the election, as long as they don't lose by too much, they actually win. They still getting their paychecks, they still making their millions, and now they get to go on vacation. Politicians react to votes and money. There is no force more powerful in this country than we the people. Stop believing in this defeatist nonsense from people like this guy on the Young Turk. Democracy works. It's working right now on the right. And it can work on the left if they choose to use democracy. Stay tuned. 2024, that's when they're going to hit the streets. Right. This is the Baby Channel. The Baby Comment section below. Click on the like button. Subscribe. Smash that bell. Be well.